Welcome to the channel. This is Waga. Today we're going to work on some form validation uh, using Combine, right? And um, let's get down to work. First thing we're going to do is um, we're, we're just going to build out the the various text fields that we're going to use on the form, so that we can um, now get to the meat of the of the issue of working with Combine. So we'll run through that very quickly. I have videos on all this on text and form fields. If you're interested in the same playlist as you'll find this video, just go to my channel, check out the playlist tab, and you can find out if you're interested more in text form fields. I go into them into a bit more detail with them. But let's get to work. So first things first, we could say here is we could make this large. So we could say dot font, and we could say dot large title, which is the largest preset. And after that, we probably should put everything in a VStack, right? So we could command click this and we could put it in a VStack and um, maybe give it an initialize of some spacing. We say spacing, um, let's make it 20, like so. And we come down here and we can have a text field like so. And um, our text field is going to take. Uh, no, it's supposed to be in a hstack, so probably come here and command click and put it in a hstack. And in the h hstack, we're going to first have an image. An image is going to an have an SF symbol, and we could say, for that, we just say system name. And the system name is going to be, um, the first one is going to be, uh, we could just say envelope.fill, right? Envelope.fill. Like so, that's that gives the nice shape of the envelope when you're doing mail. Um, one thing we've forgotten to do is um, we need state variables, right? We need state variables, and uh, for that we actually come um, above the body in the content view, and we create state variables for our form fields, right? Our text fields, rather. We could say we'd, we could start with state, and we could say private um, var, and this is going to be text field like so, and we're going to have this. Yeah, and we could copy this. Um, let's give it a more descriptive name. We call it mail. Let's call it mail, like so. And we can copy this line, copy it, come down, click down here, paste it, um, repeat the trick. And the next one is going to be um, phone, like so. And the third and final one is going to be contact, like so. So that's what we're going to hook up our text fields to. And let's get to work uh, and continue from there. Now, the next thing we could do is we could pass in the argument. The argument here we want is going to be the placeholder, the first one. As you can see, I was trying it out first. Um, so we are going to say mail, like so. And the second argument is going to be the text. And we're going to bind it to mail, like this. And uh, for us to bind it, we need the dollar sign, like so. So you do that, and you get this um, in the on the side, like this. And the next thing we need to do is maybe let's spruce it up a bit. And we could say font, and the font is going to be, um, f uh, we could say font, uh, font dot system like so. And the style is going to be, let's give it a size of, um, I don't know, 20. The design, we could make it uh, mono spaced. Mono spaced like so and after that we could make it a fog we could give it a foreground color uh when i was building it i went with pink uh foreground color foreground color and i went with um dot pink uh choose one that you feel that is more to your taste and we could say dot text field why is it oh this is supposed to be dot monospace not just monospace dot monospace like so and yeah and after that we have text field style this is just styling stuff it's nothing to do with combine so we could say rounded um rounded border text field style like so uh yeah and after that we we're going to say uh we're going to make sure the text is leading so we could say multi multi-line text alignment and we could say leading you could put trailing essentially and yeah could put trailing or whatever you could also say disable auto correction true and stuff like that but we are not going to go into that right now and um the other text field options you could put but we just are not interested in that right now and we could put an overlay and the overlay is going to be a rounded rectangle a rounded rectangle and the rounded rectangle uh, of course it needs a corner radius right uh wait and our corner radius is going to be corner radius i uh, know corner corner radius not corner size corner radius and this is going to be 10 like so and after that we are going to give it a stroke a stroke and um, we could make the color dot 
feel free to play around with this color dot purple and um give it a line width the line width can be four and after all this we give it a bit of padding like so yeah so you get this let's let's run it on our simulator let's get a pro max and run it and we can see it in the simulator give it a second it's so basically this is our i prefer using the simulator rather than a live preview so yeah you could just use it on the live preview if you want uh yeah so basically that and you could say uh, the the text is pink like we had put it so basically we have created that now what we're going to do is we're going to outsource this view so that you can we don't have to type all this again we just outsource it into uh, its own struct and yeah and deal with it like that uh, for the phone and contact and then we can start off with the meat of the issue which is the combined to do is we need to extract this sub view so we would come here and we could say we could command click this and we could extract the sub view and um, the extract sub view can be just called let's call it a field like so so we call it field like that and um, the first thing we need to do of course is to sort out the binding issue so we would come here and say binding I have a video on binding um, and we could say var value and this is going to be a string like so and um, after that we are going to of course sort it out and for that we need to come to the text here and we can say instead of this we could say um, value like so and we also need to take out um, sort of a few things that are going to be different in our various fields the first one is uh, going to be the placeholder so we could say var placeholder which is going to be the string like so and um, after that we are going to have the icon the the icon we want to use and this is going to be var icon and this is going to be a string right we're just going to pass in a no capitalize the string okay and for us to solve that we can come here to the system name and instead of envelope with fill we could say this is going to be um the system name is going to be icon uh yeah like so and we forgot to, we forgot to add a bit of padding let's add a bit of padding here so we give it a, a bit of padding there and after that we the text field the first argument which is going to be the placeholder is going to be just that the placeholder so you could come here and say place oh i'm typing it wrong placeholder like so so we put in the placeholder and and yeah basically that's that um and here we come to the field and it requires a couple of arguments and we could say the value the value is going to be um dollar sign and we're going to connect it to mail the placeholder is going to be um what do we call it we call it um, mail like so the icon is going to be envelope.fill the icon is going to pass it as a string so we could say envelope.fill like so and we hit this and we hit resume we should see it yeah so we have added a bit of padding it looks a bit better right now so we could do the same for the phone and the contact so for that we just need to call we just need to call field here again we could say field like so and we pass in the value the value in this case is going to be dollar sign phone like so and the place hold the placeholder not palace the placeholder here is going to be um what's the what's the placeholder we want the the placeholder is going to be just phone right we could say phone and the icon the icon is going to be phone dot circle dot fill we have a string here called phone dot circle dot fill like so fill 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 yeah like so yeah so that's what you're looking for and the final one the last before we can start working on our combine now is the dollar sign is going to be contact i believe uh, the placeholder is going to be contact. It's going to be a string saying contact like so and um, The icon is going to be uh, We could say person Person person. Let me just spell it correctly person dot crop Dot fill these are just SF symbols, right? So if we wait for this this should be let's make it a bit smaller Okay, why isn't it person person? I can't see the contact one. It's supposed to be person.crop.circle. Wait, I forgot a word. Dot circle 
dot fill like so yes so now basically we have um created our three uh text fields we have extracted the sub view so that we can reuse it and um we have it now we can start working on the combine right yeah and that's what we're going to do next. need to do is we're we going to put up a button that is going to govern whether or not um we can sign up uh based on whether we have we have met the validators the validators which we are yet to create so for that it's just going to be a simple button nothing to special we could come here and say action mm, and come down here and um put in the text the text will say sign up like so and we could give it a bit of padding and um make the font um headline and um the background should be a shape rounded rectangle and a rounded rectangle needs a corner radius and the corner radius can be 12 and we can give it a bit of stroke we can say um we can say dot stroke where dot stroke and the stroke is going to be a color color dot stroke oh sorry it's supposed to be inside the stroke of course it's going to be color dot purple the purple like so and um the line width is going to be three like so so we do that and we get our button so we are going to based on whether you meet the criteria this button is going to be clickable or not an h stack with a san francisco symbol and some text which will tell us whether or not we are validated and for that it's pretty simple we just come down here and it will be after every single form field um we can say h stack like so put it here and um what we could have here is first we have an image and in the image just type in the system name it's going to be a san francisco symbol and this is going to be x mark uh the problem with this they don't even help you along so you have let me just check it out this is going to be x mark x mark dot is it fill um i think it's x mark x mark dot square not fill x mark dot square and um after that we're going to put in some text and this is going to be uh we could say approved or rejected depending on whether you are validate the val how the validation has gone um and we could make it a bit prettier by coming here and say x mark dot and we say foreground color and the foreground color is going to be let's have it as red and um since this is an sf symbol you can just increase the size by typing the uh, using the font right and for that we could be font dot title and we could do the same for the for this and um also make it the same color let's make it both either it's going to be either red or green and um let's just type it here dot foreground color and this is going to be dot red like so right okay um yeah so basically that is um extract this sub view so i could come here and command click right command click and we extract it extract the sub view right and we can call the sub view what could we call it uh, the hardest thing is in computer science is naming things uh, we could call it validate validate validator like so and yeah we could call it validator like so and yeah basically that and we can now put it under every single field so we could come here copy this put it under every single field we'll have different validations to look at and come here and say validator like so so we basically have a validator under every single field and if we can resume we can see it in our canvas on the canvas so approved 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 yeah so now we can start working on the 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 meat of the project we need to do is create a model that we are going to use um yeah that will um hold our combine uh that will have use the combined framework and we will use to validate our form so we could come here and we could hit command n uh, we create a new Swift file, like so. We hit create, and what do we call it? Um, okay, we should rename it. Let's let's call it um, register user model, like so. Okay. Now, when you want to use a combine framework, you have to import it, right? So we could say import combine, and combine is basically the two core elements of combine are publish and subscriber and uh, the publisher sends events and the subscriber receives values from the publisher uh, pretty simple right so for example um if you look at a text field when you're using combine each keystroke uh from the user triggers a value change event the subscriber which is subscribed 
uh, is interested in monitoring those values. Uh, this is best seen rather than explained, right? So first, we could first things we could do is um, we could create a class, and we can call this class register user, and it will um, conform to the observable object, right? So we could say observable object like so, and in it we are going to have inputs and outputs. Now, um, the inputs hold the value of the form view. Uh, form view, the different form views, and um, we use the annotation at published to inform subscribers whenever the value changes. So for example, we would come here and say at published, at published, and we could say var mail, and this is going to be an empty string, right? And we could repeat it for the other three. If you can remember our, if we can come to our content view, you can find that there are three, um, three form field, three text fields, right? So we could come back here and we could say we could copy this copy and we can repeat the trick three times right uh like so why is it complaining okay an internal error okay, okay. the error has, has disappeared okay instead of mail this one is going to be phone and contact right so we have here phone and we have here contact like so um after this, these are going to be the inputs and the outputs. Uh, we could say um, we could have also at published. I'll explain why there too. Uh, we could say var is mail valid, and this is going to be set to false, like so. And we could copy this, and we could copy this. Come down here, uh, repeat the trick three times. Uh huh. Do that. Okay. And after is mail valid is going to be is phone valid and the third one the third and final is going to be is contact is it contact okay contact valid like so now um the reason that the two uh publishers mail in this case mail emits a value when a keystroke is made in the text field while is is mail is mail valid this one this one emits a value and this one um sub informs subscribers of the validation of the status change and uh, changes the style of the UI, right? So this one emits the value and this one uh, informs the UI elements that are subscribed to either turn red and say approved or disapproved depending on what has been typed, right? Um, yeah, so basically that. And um, we're going to have private of our cancelable, cancelable set and um, it's going to be the set where we set um, an action after it has been cancelled. Any, we could say any cancelable, like so, and this is going to be just an empty set, like so. Um, yeah, so we'll continue from there. That it's, um, it is used to cancel our subscriptions at the, the, the moment that it's required to be cancelled. It basically helps us with uh, managing subscriptions and cancelling them. And yeah, we will see more about it in a bit. So I remembered I've just not put an, uh, an equal sign there and we can go, we can continue. Now, the next thing we need to do is put an init method where we will initialize all the subscribers to listen to the value changes uh, in the various text fields uh, so that they can perform the related validations. So basically what that means is that we're going to say init like so and come down here and um, we are going to, let's just type it out first. We're going to have map uh, mail sorry mail mail like so and um we're going to say receive and um it's going to be on the main loop so on run loop dot main like so and after that we're going to map it and um here we're going to say mail mail in and it's going to return the only check for um, our our what's it called our validator is if to check if it's actually mail it's going to have to have the at sign so for that we just say contains contains and the character here is going to be at so if it contains at it's a validator it's a it's valid it's a valid mail so if you just type at get a valid mail so here we're going to say assign and we are going to say to and this is going to be forward slash dot is we're going to assign it to the is mail valid like so 
on and it's just here so we're going to say on self so yeah so basically um here we connect the two we connect the two uh publishers it listens to the mail as you can see here and um validates it based on whether or not it meets if it meets this criteria which is having the at it makes this is mail valid true or false depending on the criteria and then it assigns it to is mail valid in combine assign what you the in combine assign there are two uh, i think there are two methods called sync and assign uh assign you is used to update a specific property of an object so a specific property is what we use uh, to assign um, to update in this case here if you look at our code we assign um, we put true or false to the mail validity to is mail valid right that's what we assign um, here mail is the source of the change we want to listen to and we subscribe to the main changes um, we subscribe to the changes on mail using the the keyword receive and then the subscriber receives this and um, receives the changes on the main loop, right? Uh, that's why we have run loop. And um, the value is sent along to the mail and it checks basically if we have an at. And map takes the input, map takes the input, processes it uh, depending on this validation and um, becomes true or false. So basically that's what that code does, yeah? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then assign, the thing that assign does is it returns a cancelable instance which you can use to store in this set. So this will return a cancelable instance which you can store in this set, um, which stops memory leaks. I read something about it stopping memory leaks. So basically that's how you do it. And um, so for that we would come down here and um, you see it's telling us something about it being unused. We could say dot store in... Um, cancelable set like so so we store it in cancelable set to stop memory leaks and we do this i believe for also for the others we do this for phone so we do the same for phone and um phone is going to be dot receive and um we are going to receive it on the main the main thread and for that we say run loop the main like so and after that we call map on it map and wait i can't see uh map like so and we come down here and uh we just say phone in and we're going to return a phone count it has to be basically we're just going to say if the number of digits is more than six it's fine you could write in a more complex check but as we're just going to say phone dot count if it is greater than six right it's cool with us right and after that we do the same thing we dot assign it assign uh two and we could say dot forward slash is why isn't it helping me am i typing it correctly no it's supposed to be forward slash dot is is phone um is phone valid is phone valid like so and it's on this it's on it's on this class so we could say that and we're going to store it store we could just copy this line we could just say store in cancelable set like so hit copy come here yeah like so and i think we have one more we check if the contact is valid and we come down here and wait yeah we come down here and we say dollar sign um contact like so contact yeah that's the third one and um we just copy this line instead of repeating it we're going to receive it on the main thread like so and we're going to say dot map like so and this is going to be mail mail not main may no not mail sorry contact in and we're going to return uh contact dot what change did we put here if the count okay you could you could make it you could check if it has a capital letter or something but we're just going to say if it's more than six right if contact dot count is greater or equal to six right like so and after that we can copy these two lines because they're more or less identical we copy them come down here paste them and we are not going to assign this to his phone valid we are going to assign it to his contact contact valid like so 
And yeah, so basically, those are our, these are our publishers that we're going to use um, as validators. And now we can pick it up from the other side on the, what's it called? On the contact, it's contact, yeah. Yeah, no, no, content, not contact. I'm thinking of contact. On content view, let's continue from there. Um, there are a couple of things we need to do. We ca first come to the content view and we need to make our validator a bit more fit for purpose. And uh, for that, we could come here and create the icon because it's going to flash a different icon depending on um, the validation that has occurred. And we're going to have a color, which is going to be a color like so. And we're going to have a message, a message which is dependent on either approved or rejected, right? We could say message like so, and message is going to be a string like so. Yeah, so um, we are going to come here to system name, and instead of x max square, we are going to have, um, what's it called? We could have the icon, and the foreground color is going to be, we could say, the foreground color is either going to be red or green. So here we could just say color. And the text is going to be whatever message we pass, either approved or disapproved. We could say message. And um, the color, the foreground color is going to be same, color, like so. So basically, we have done the more or less the necessary, right? So um, another thing we could do is we could get rid of this three and just connect it directly, right? So we could come here and get rid of this three state variables. Um, we're just going to connect it to the model directly. And for that, we could come here and say, at observed object, at observed object, and we create a private variable is going to be register, register user. And this is going to be an instance of, we called it, what do we call it? We call it register user or register user? We call it register user. Okay, let's just go with register, user like so so yeah so we do that and we continue from there next thing we need to do is um actually make a quick correction this is supposed to be observed object not an observable observed object because if you look at our register user our register user is the observable object not this so we should come back here and make it observed object and after that we need to correct this so it's here it's bound to the mail which we have just um commented out and to correct it we should come here and say register user dot mail like so come down here correct it again and say register register if i can spell it correctly register user dot phone and the final one is going to be register user dot contact and our three register let me just spell register correctly yeah and our three problems go away right and now we have to sort out the validator and um, the validator is going to depend on the three output publishers that we had. If you can go back here. So it's going to depend on is mail valid, is, con is phone valid, and is contact valid. And display a message based on that using a ternary operator, right? Um, a ternary just um, evaluates a condition and either gives the first or the second, depending on whether the condition is true or false, uh, basic stuff. So we could come here and say for our icon, our icon is going to be in the mail instance. Our icon is going to be register. We just reach out to register user dot is mail valid. Put a ternary. And if it is valid, it's going to be check mark dot uh, rectangle dot fill. If it is invalid, it's going to be that is X mark dot square that is it's either if it's okay it's going to put the check sign if it's not it's going to put the x sign right yeah so um yeah the color after this the next thing is going to be the color the color is going to be dependent on the same thing right it's going to check is uh color is going to be register user dot is mail valid and if it's valid it's going to be color dot green if it is invalid it's going to be color dot you guessed it red and um the message is going to be register user dot is uh mail valid is mail valid and um register user dot is mail valid where is it i've lost my space okay uh, ternary and it's going to be either it's going to be accepted capitalized 
accepted and if it's not well tough luck kid rejected so basically yeah basically that and we're going to do it for the other three right let's just comment out validator here so you can see it working or not okay so we could hit resume like so and build succeeded and we could make it live and we could come here okay still loading the preview now um our canvas has decided uh, stopped acting up and now it's right so we see uh it's marked it's now live uh it's marked as rejected we can type whatever we want nothing comes up but remember the check of whether the validation works was if it contains an at symbol the at symbol or the at uh, character so we could come back to content view and just to test it we could say at and we get accepted so that means our validator is working now the next thing we need to do is we could copy this validator and um let's copy the validator come here copy it like so copy and put it under the phone you can put it under the phone and also do the same put it under the i believe contact was contact yeah basically put it under the phone under the contact and we can change the um requirements this is supposed to be is register user is phone valid like so and this is going to be is phone valid like so and check the third check is going to be is phone valid like so is phone valid like so and the contact one is going to be um is no prizes for guessing is contact valid come down here do the same is contact valid and come for the third one the third and final one and say is contact valid so basically those three are done we have is contact valid is contact valid and is contact valid is contact valid is phone valid and is mail valid and we can now check them quickly let's do at that's sorted uh for the phone what was the condition um i believe it was more than six or something yeah six and okay fine okay it's supposed to be more than six so we could say at accepted we could say this 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 accepted more than six this one should be six one two three four five six accepted so basically that's how we sort our you could put more complex like you could put more uh, stringent methods but that's what we're putting and now we're going to look at how to sort out the button, button. we could create um we could get, create a publisher that would just check the button but i figured that it would be based on whether these other validators uh validators um change to true it would depend on whether these other validators amount to true or false right so you could just put the check inside here so what you could do is you could come to the button and you would see i was just testing it and you put the disabled and this disabled takes a boolean right so what we could do is we could put a bunch of brackets here and we could check if register user dot mail and and um register user dot phone and register user dot what's the third one contact and we just check whether or not it's true so we just put a an exclamation point ahead of that right register user why is it complaining register user dot oh not mail dot is valid is mail valid right it's supposed to be is mail valid right is mail that's what is needed and here is going to be is is phone valid and this is going to be not contact it's going to be is contact valid like so so basically if we do this and we save and um we bring this up here we should check and um let's just run it again and we can put it here and we can check whether or not it works so first we could try you see we can't click it i'm trying to click uh hopefully i've turned on c clicks on my screen recorder but you see i can't click but if i put at here let's put an at and try to click still doesn't work come to phone put some numbers accepted click not working come to contact and now you can click so basically when all three are accepted it can click and that's how you do validation um using swift ui and combine of course you can put more stringent methods you could for example use it use it in a password where you put you check whether the two entrants whether the two passwords given are correct and do something with it yeah basically that so okay um thank you for watching this much 
subscribe to the channel if you're new here. We have most 50UI content. And I will see you in the next video.